Everyone in the cell phone business, whether you're one of the Soviet ministries, whether you're a handset maker, whether you're a software maker, has been scrambling since last June or even really last January when it was announced to, to copy it. And it has huge implications. Because if you thought you were worried about privacy, if you thought you were worried about the grid being in your face all the time, if you thought you were worried about all of this stuff with PCs, with laptops, even light laptops, now in your pocket you've got essentially a computer that can do a whole lot of the things that a laptop can do. And the principal thing that this does that most of the, I would say all of the others, including the BlackBerry, fail to do, but what you're going to now see on a lot of them, is this really, this really surfs the web. There's a real web browser on this. When you get a link in an email to a web page and you click on that link, in a BlackBerry, in a Trio, the, it kind of renders in a weird way. It doesn't look the way it looks on your PC. And on here, it does. So people have actually written articles about how annoying iPhone owners are because you can never have a discussion with them that involves a dispute about facts. <laughs> you can't have a bar bet that they won't immediately whip out the iPhone and go to the internet to solve. And again, you could do that on a BlackBerry. You could do it on a Trio, but it was clumsy and cumbersome, and it didn't work right, so you tended not to do it. This is the first handheld computer where you can actually feel like it's so easy and simple and quick, I'll go do it, just like you do naturally on your computer. And I submit to you that this has big implications. I, it has so far had and will continue, I think, to have very good implications if you're an Apple shareholder. Um, it's a cool, fun, powerful device to carry around. I find that when I, I've had this now for about a year, uh, I went out and was one of the suckers that paid $5.99 for it. The new one, which is five times as fast, sells for $1.99 and will go on sale next week. But, um, but I find it's changed the way I use the internet already and email because if I'm on a stopover at an airport that's like an hour or less, I don't bother to take up my laptop anymore. Now, those of you with Blackberries who were just checking email, you might do the same. But I don't just check email on this. I catch up on my website reading. I catch up on the news. I catch up on stocks and weather and all kinds of things on this. And it's really easy and it works really well. And I think these kinds of handheld computers, at these kinds of prices, $199 or probably less eventually, are going to begin proliferating. So what does that mean? What does that mean? That means we're all on the grid all the time. When we have, you've read articles that have said, hey, we're all on the grid all the time, but you know what? We really weren't because you didn't really have a computer with you all the time that you, that you felt like opening up that was there. But with this, you're on the grid all the time. You're on the grid all the time. And I think it raises even higher the problem of how do we have a life where there's room for contemplation, where there's room even to do your work without being constantly pinged at and, and interrupted. And I don't only mean interrupted by the intrusion of email, because again, your BlackBerry was going to do that for you. I mean interrupted by, I don't know if there's a word for this, but that subtle feeling you get in your head that maybe I ought to go check Slate. Maybe I ought to go check uh, Facebook and see if anybody new wants to be my friend. <laughs> it's like Bill, Bill Gates once said to me, you know, you wake up in the morning, you realize those 237 people really aren't your friends. 